All you want to do is forget. All Satan wants you to do is forget. You're asking yourself the repetitive question of, why don't I do what everyone else is doing? Why don't I have a boyfriend or girlfriend yet? Why didn't I go to that party? You're asking yourself the question as why you can't let go of yourself, your integrity, in order to do what is popular, what seems enjoyable. The one thing that God reminds us is that he doesn't want you to forget your course. The reason as to why you're here, the reason why he gave you life, and then he gave it to you more abundantly. Stay tuned for this message entitled, Forgetting Your Course. Silence through the storm. This is coming from Psalm 32, verse 1 through 4. And it says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. So when we look at this, there's many people that confess godliness but deny the power. And we've already established that the power comes within change. If you are the same person that you were when you first met Christ, then something is wrong with your walk. You have to remember that when Jesus Christ died for you, he took away every transgression that could be named against you, which means that you're no longer weak through sin, but you're made strong because you've overcome it through the name of Jesus Christ. It mentions in two, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and whose spirit there is no guilt. You may be looking at this as something of impossible. Because you're saying, well, I still fight with right and wrong, good and evil, Pastor Sean. I don't know how that there's a man out there who doesn't fight with the same things. But the word encourages us. That when God sets his Holy Spirit or his seed within you of righteousness and holiness, that no iniquity shall proceed. So what does that mean? You now have a light that outshines darkness. So when you're looking at life, don't look and pay so much attention at what's in front of you. We oftentimes mistaken the things that are in front of us as the things that are most important, the things in which we have to deal with immediately. But these are just things that are there to blind us from the real purpose in life, that we don't forget our course. If God has already battled every single battle in which is going to come to you, then truly, you don't have to set your mind on those things. So what do you have to set your mind on? The things that matter, the things that encourage God to keep fighting for you. Which is a sound mind and a sound heart in doing what is right in God's eyes. And three, it says, when I kept silence, my bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. How many times have we dealt with this? We, we understand that we should just lay it there at the footstool of Jesus and he will take care of everything. And when we consider that someone's bashing our name and we feel as though we could do something in order to stop them, in order to lessen the blow in which they have given, and only to realize that we made things worse, we learn to keep our silence. Because God knows how to deal with everything. He's not only the physician of our bodies, but he's the physician of our lives. He could fix anything in which you should go through. There's no question in how big the storm is to God. He even goes to Peter while the storm was raging. And he said, peace be still to all things that will come up against the children of God. All you have to do is have faith. Faith is believing in the things in which you have not seen yet. But when you feel God and you understand that you have been translated, converted, transformed, into his likeness, then you know that he'll bring you through it. It says in 4, for day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Shalah. 
at times it's going to feel as though you're losing yourself. You're losing who you are because you're not retaliating to every person that comes up to you. You're not dealing with the problems the same way that the old you used to deal with it. And now you're feeling like you're losing yourself and God is something fake and you're losing on what's real. But that's what Satan wants you to believe. He doesn't want you to believe in the power of God. Remember, Satan was once up there. He only discovered the true strength of God when he tried to go up against him. Don't go up against God to find out his true strength. Who God has set free is free indeed. And he set you free a long time ago. He never said you have to deal with these problems. He never said you have to have an answer to every question that someone comes up to you with. Sometimes the answer comes within silence. Sometimes that's the greatest answer you could give someone. Because that will show them that it's no longer you who's going to fight the battle. But it's someone greater. Keep silence through the storm. God will fight the battle. Just believe. What is real? This is coming from Psalm 32, verse 5 through 7. It says in verse 5, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hid. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Salah. So many a times we have to consider what is real. If you're finding that every day you're waking up and the same people are coming to you with the same drama, that's not real. That's not what God wants you to pay attention to. Because what you're going to find is as long as you keep paying attention to those people, they're going to keep coming. But when you stop listening, when you redirect your focus on the things that is important, like your relationship with God, you're going to find that these people are not going to find it fun any longer to play around with you because you're not going to pay attention to them any longer. At first, you may feel that it's a front and you have to fake as though you're not paying attention to them. But soon enough, you're going to acknowledge that once Jesus Christ died for you, he took care of it all, including those people in your life that want to cause you the greatest harm. Transgression is something greater than just sin, although it's counted as a sin. It's when God has reassured you that he will take care of something, yet you didn't listen and you felt as though you had to take matters into your own hand. Confession is the greatest thing in which we have. Sometimes you feel that you could confess your greatest sins to your greatest friends or family members. But that's why Christ is there. That's why God is there to listen. Many people will utterly supplant. Many people will complain and bring back those same things in which you thought was covered under the blood. Which is why you've got to learn how to confess your problems, your transgressions to God. Now, when you confess it, you're going to find that if you are confessing the same sin that you have done repeatedly, hopefully you'll realize that you need to get deeper in Christ. Because then you're not being real. You're not being focused. You're being fake. Because you haven't overcome the thing in which God said you can overcome. In 6 it says, For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. What is he saying here? Those problems in which you're praying about, my child needs to get it together, they need to come back to God. No, that, those are not your problems. That's their problem. Your problem is how do I get closer? What you need to pay attention to is how do I get closer? How do I stop letting these things that are bothering me day in and day out to stop that I could focus on what God wants me to focus on? 
while you're raging and getting angry over the things that are in front of you, there's someone dying who needed the word of encouragement, who needed to see you stronger than what you're perpetuating. It says the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. God is there for you. But you know what? There's going to come a time where you keep fighting against God to a point where you don't even know his voice any longer. You'll be given over to a reprobate mind. And what that means is the things that you thought is right is actually wrong. And the things that you feel are wrong are actually right. We've all been there. Thinking that you're right and everyone looking at you and saying, man, you are dead wrong. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have spoken that way to that person. Now, could you imagine a life like that? If Christ is the light, without him we're in darkness. So what does that mean? We need him. In 7 it says, Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Salah. The songs in which we deal with on a daily basis are not even godly songs. You know, God even tells us in the word that we can make up our own songs. That love song, the greatest love in which you have is to God. Songs of deliverance. No one could sing it better than you. You got through it. God made it better. Many a times we are looking for that praise and that worship from church, waiting for Sunday to come around to feel that spirit of joy. But what's real is what's inside you, and that's the spirit of deliverance. God says you are called greater than conquerors, which means what? You've already conquered everything because now you have Christ abiding within you. God is your hiding place. Not that bottle of rum. Not that party. Not that boyfriend or girlfriend. Not those relationships that are only temporary. Those are not your hiding places. You will find that they make you the most shameful. Because everyone is now on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and posting what you did last night. God is your hiding place. God is real. Your friends are only temporal. Focus on what's real in life. Be real with yourself. Come out of the situation you're dealing with. And let God be the source in your life. Mystery. This is coming from Psalm 32, verse 8 through 11. I'll instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. Be ye not as a horse or as a mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and brittle, lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked, but he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. So if God is going to instruct you and teach you the way that you should go, we all know what's right and wrong. And it's not by our own wisdom. It's not because of television and what they're teaching us. It's because God has given us a conscience. And the conscience bears witness of what's right and what's wrong. But if you're going to be like someone who's a, like a horse or you have to be told every second of what's right and what's wrong, first off, you're going to be losing those people within your life that really want to help you. But secondarily, you're going to lose your course within life because you keep fighting against what's right and wrong. And soon enough, if you start listening or continue to listen to the things that are wrong, soon enough, you're going to believe that those things are right. It's called confusion. So God doesn't want you to keep stumbling in the same sins. And that's, that's something that we battle with. We, don't, we believe that God's a merciful God. And He is. But He doesn't want you to continue in sin. 
Because a person who continues in sin has no understanding. No understanding of what? No understanding of the price that was paid for you. Satan understands. That's why he's persecuting the saints daily. Going to God about the saints daily. We can't see that happening. Why? Because we're focused on what's in front of us. He doesn't want you to be that person who has to be, you know, you feel as though you got to put your hand over your mouth or, or you got to bite your tongue when you speak. He wants you to understand. And if you understand, then you're no longer a child, but you're a person in God that could instruct your flesh on how it should act. So this is the things in which we have to deal with. It says, many sorrow shall be to the wicked. But he that trusteth in Lord mercy shall compass him about. What you have to understand is if you have sorrows without deliverance, you're going to be a very sad person. But since God is instructing and teaching you, then the sorrows are already taken care of. Hopefully you're starting to understand that you don't have to worry about what's presented to you. You have to understand and think about the things in which you cannot see. Like the relationship you have with God. Sometimes we're asking our question, ourselves the question that, and saying, we don't feel. Is God real? Because I'm not feeling him anymore. I'm not feeling that presence. Well, that means that you just need to work harder on that relationship. It's just like in your normal relationships, your physical relationships. You say, well, I don't... Feel as though you care. So what does that mean to that person or to that spouse? It means that they have to work harder. So God feels the relationship. He believes it's real. But maybe you don't. So that means you need to work harder on the relationship with him. It says be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. When you're upright in heart, you know what is right and you believe in it. You understand God is the only thing that is right and everyone else is wrong. You may even find yourself thanking God and saying, well, you know what? Thank you for showing me that I was wrong all this time and that you have been the realest person within my life. No longer would you forget your course in nature. Your course in this life is not to fight every battle. God is there to fight every battle. All you have to do is keep silent. But while you're keeping silent, understand, reassure yourself, nourish yourself in the word of God. Everything is going to be all right. God is going to take everything into consideration. I will be the one that will stand up in the latter end. These are the tools that we have to have. Because everyone wants us to forget who we are. But Christ wants us to remember that he will never leave us nor forsake us. To hold on to his unchanging hand. Thank you for tuning into this message. I hope that if you have forgotten your course, losing yourself in the parties and the social media, that you will find yourself through this message. God is not far from any man. You didn't mess up that badly that he's going to forget about you. If you felt anything while hearing these messages, then there's still hope. Continue in faith. Walk in God. Forget everything. Forget everyone. Because God is a true thing in your life that you need to deal with. God bless. <laughs>